Tehran, journalist and commentator Mustafa Khushchesh, uh, who's with us also from the Iranian capital, is uh, uh, here now to give us more insight on uh, the recent comments made by Ayatollah Khamenei. Mr. Khushchesh, walk us through the recent comments made uh, by the leader. Also, uh, if you can, in his opening statements, he was paying tribute uh, to uh, the late Lieutenant General Hassan Soleimani as well. Hello, Badi, and thanks for having me. Well, uh, the leader's speech uh, can, uh, came in two major sections. One was about uh, Tehran's revenge for uh, the assassination, the U.S. assassination of uh, Lieutenant General Qasem Soleimani and Abu Mahdi al-Muhandis, as well as the recent assassination of Dr. Fakhri Zadeh and Tehran's response to such terrorist attacks, as well as uh, uh, a second part, that focused on Iran's strategy in dealing with the United States and Iran's future plans for coming months and the coming years, how Iran will treat uh, the United States and the West and the U.S. allies in Europe. Well, in the first part, uh, as expected, he reiterated that Tehran's response would not be contained and limited to just a single uh, direct military response as expected and reiterated already by uh, the Iranian Supreme Leader, uh, he stressed once again that Tehran's response would include a direct response as well as political pressures on the opponent that has uh, planned to lay pressure on Tehran, delay Tehran's progress and advancement and empowerment of its power components in the region. When it assassinated uh, Lieutenant General Qasem Soleimani, it meant to harness Iran's growing influence in the region. And by assassination of Dr. Fakhrizadeh, they meant to delay Iran's nuclear industry progress, as well as uh, Iran's uh, power in uh, defense research and development. So what he said was that uh, what they, they mean to uh, lay pro political pressure on Tehran to force Tehran into talks, but Tehran would not be subdued and Tehran would uh, reciprocate with uh, political response and pressure. Uh, actually, the recent parliament bill uh, about the very same topic uh, was part of Tehran's response to that assassination and the recent moves made by the United States and Israel to pressure Tehran into talks the way Biden desires and would desire. So uh, that was the second part. And, and the third uh, uh, point is that Tehran would reinvigorate its uh, uh, power components by funding and relying more on these power components, be it the missile industry, the original power that was touched by him, as well as the nuclear industry. So uh, uh, what he said was that Tehran w was, is not going to be subdued by such acts. And as Mr. Pompeo uh, claimed last year after the assassination of uh, Lieutenant uh, General Qasem Soleimani, he said that the assassination was part of the U.S. plans uh, to uh, defuse or to solve the challenges uh, or remove the challenges facing the United States in this region. So what uh, the Iranian Supreme Leader was actually uh, the opposite. He said that Iran is going to reinvigorate its power in the region. It was a confirmation of the remarks that was made in a last night interview, a very uh, outstanding and remarkable interview by Qasem Soleimani's daughter, Zainab Soleimani, when uh, she said that her father's path has been reinvigorated after his assassination, that uh, thousands more in the region are paving the same path. So when he said that there is no difference between Biden, Obama, or Donald Trump, uh, it was also a confirmation of similar remarks by, by Zainab Soleimani last night in the interview with uh, Russia Today, that, where she said also the same thing and the same fact. It shows that uh, the Iranian Supreme Leader, uh, which is uh, who is uh, duty-bound based on the Constitution to develop strategies of the Islamic Republic, he is very much resolved, as uh, always, to continue a similar path that has been paved in the past uh, four decades. And the sec second section, uh, uh, his point uh, was very similar to when he spoke first about talks with the United States several years ago when he said that he was pessimistic, but he would give a chance to President Rouhani to try talks. So 
Uh, the interpretation and the meaning of what he said today was that if the U.S. proves one day to be honest, to look for a conflict resolution, Iran would not lose even one single hour to resolve the differences and remove the uh, sanctions. But uh, Iran cannot do that because the United States is not honest, because the U.S. is actually looking for containing Iran's power components uh, through talks. And talks has become, uh, have become kind of leverage and means an instrument to leverage Iran to pressure Iran so the end game for the US to go to talks with Iran is containing Iran's power component within the containment strategy that has been uh, uh, put into effect uh, uh, in 2008 and 9 uh, 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 at the beginning of uh, Obama's presidency and for Tehran, it's always been a conflict resolution approach, and Tehran has always been desiring a conflict resolution with anyone, if it's possible, through talks. But what he said today is that the U.S. still continues to be uh, uh, in quest for similar goals, similar objectives. It's still trying to use talks in order to pressure Tehran. Uh, so Iran needs to develop its power components. That's the main strategy that was stressed today, that Iran is going to develop its power component. So, uh, uh, as an analyst, I'm now waiting for seeing more funds in the budget, actually, to go to the defense uh, research, uh, to the defense ministry, to Iran's nuclear industries, as well as uh, other areas of power, uh, uh, like missile industries. Iran's missile industry would be reinvigorated, I believe. Uh, uh, he said, uh, the main point is that Iran also needs to add a four area of power to its three earlier uh, zones and spheres of power. That's economy. As long as your economy could be damaged or hurt uh, uh, by the United States sanctions, uh, uh, the U.S. would be no shy of using the same leverage again and again against Iran, and they would not remove the sanctions in effect, although they might do that over the paper, like what Obama did at the beginning of the JCPOA, but he never took real action to remove the sanctions. So he stressed that Tehran's strategy should focus on developing economic power and economy of resistance or national economy, as has been stated uh, all throughout the last several years. So mainly uh, we are speaking uh, uh, about one very important point here all throughout this uh, speech today that uh, despite claims that the Biden administration and his win uh, in the recent presidential election might change Iran's strategy and approach towards the region and towards the United States, Iran believes that the cases are still the same since President Biden has requested uh, the same uh, uh, demands uh, that Donald Trump did and Obama did. Uh, they want to contain Iran's power through talks, and Tehran is adamant and insists that it would develop its uh, power components uh, until the day arrives when the U.S. Uh, would change and shift approach and strategy to uh, respect Iran in action and not just words, as uh, uh, Obama uh, stopped using the word regime for Tehran to show respect, but it was just verbal respect. Tehran wants respect in action, that they need to acknowledge Iran as a regional power, and they should not be looking for containing Iran or going for regime change. So uh, it was a re-emphasis, a reiteration of, uh, the, uh, of Tehran's strategy, showing that as long as the U.S. is adamant to a conflict resolution approach, uh, Tehran would not budge and would not be subdued. All right, thanks a lot. Uh, that was journalist and commentator Mostafa Khosh joining us from the uh, Iranian capital, uh, Tehran. Thank you for sharing uh, your comments with us here.